and welcome to Sunday Social, um, a monthly at the moment podcast slash long form video series where I talk to really cool people in the arts, entertainment, social media industries and we discuss how they got to where they are today. So welcome my second guest, Josh Edwards. Hello, hello. We're pals. We're so it's quite nice. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Clarify. Yeah. <laughs> but it's okay. like, so when people come over. Yeah. It's really nice because it's usually people that I, I've met, especially for this series, mm-hmm. people that I know. Yeah. And so I tend to like have an hour of catch up and just, yeah. how's your life going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it becomes like actual proper, mm-hmm. we're going to record now, here's our... Well, that's what's happened is that I arrived about an hour and a half ago <laughs> and it was like full on conversation. And now I feel like we're going to struggle. Yeah. No, 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 <laughs> we're, fine. we're fine. We'll be fine. Right, I need to take my jumper off. So continuity. Oh great! I'm hot. And I'm wearing a nice top. Are you? Do you know it looks like a Salem top. Oh, Salem would wear this. No. Salem would <laughs> wear that. Z. Yeah. Z. You look like now it looks like it's an interview. Before it looked like <laughs> it was two friends just hanging out. Now it's like so. So I prefer to not introduce people as I understand their jobs to be, and rather they introduce themselves. Mm-hmm. How would you describe what you do? Oh my goodness. Um, I have two jobs, both are quite full on. Um, one of them is a working at Ministry of Sound in A&R, which stands for Artist and Repertoire, which essentially Does means... Does it? Do you know what? I was going to ask you what that meant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, um, it's essentially, well, it's the idea of you find the artist and then your job is to provide the repertoire, throw them together. Amazing. And you just get a guy like me standing at gigs just going... <laughs> Yeah, that sounds about right. I'd like to add that Josh has been described to me by one particular person as the only decent A and R that he's ever met. Yeah. <laughs> so that's nice. No, no, that's, yeah, that's, you that's got high praise. Yeah, yeah, good reputation. Um, and then the other one is uh, more notably um, as Dodie's manager. Uh, uh-huh. Who is Dodie? Dodie is a musician, uh, fantastic singer songwriter, and has also come from YouTube. Um, she recently released an EP called You, which came out at the end of August. Oh, we also get Dodie's bio. We also get Dodie's <laughs> no, but bio. she's great. She is fantastic. The thing is, is that the reason why I do that so much is because I just, I, I think that like with management especially, is that if you can't constantly talk about your artist um, in such a positive manner, then then why are you doing it essentially um, there are several people that I've come across that just like have about 10 or 15 artists on their roster and they talk about the new thing and they talk mm. about how excited they are about the new thing and it's like oh but what about act number 5 and they're like yeah, yeah they're, they're doing really well it's like like oh god I can't imagine being managed by someone that wasn't passionate about me exactly like the thing that I love is um, so like for instance Adele's manager, Jonathan Dickens, also manages London Grammar, and the only thing that I seem to get from him is just positivity on both sides. And on top of that, even though they're both extremely successful artists, one being, you know, probably the biggest artist in the world, yeah. the other one certainly can get to that stage. It's just, it's it's building. I mean, they had a number one record and stuff very recently, but on top of that, I think that they can really go the distance. But he and the team around it always thrive to do better. Yeah. And I think that's what the key thing with management is, is that, like, you always just want to do better. You might have nailed it and you might have been like, cool, we've levelled up and we've officially completed the music industry. (laughs) But still, like, you can just keep doing better. And that's because you just need to have that confidence in in the person you're working with. Oh yeah, completely. You've got to believe in their longevity as well as their like, yeah. current current goodness. Yeah, I mean, so the thing with... Relevance. Um, relevance, yes. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so with... Um, uh, sorry, you've asked me one question and I've talked <laughs> for five this minutes fine. already. This is Can basically I... a kind of interview. Oh, okay. Way. Yeah. You're right. Okay. I'm not. I'm not gonna be like. And now we must have mutual conversation. <laughs> no. The we... whole time. Yeah. I um. I had, so I was watching um. This is a complete tangent, but I was watching Stephen Colbert and he had Conan O'Brien on, and yeah. he asked him one question, 
And Conan spoke for 10 minutes solidly. Really? And answered just this one question. And he's just like, and uh, Conan said, are you all right? And Stephen <laughs> went, yeah, no, I'm fine. I just asked you one question. And as you can see, you've talked for 10 minutes. <laughs> so that's how this interview is going to go. Yeah, very excited. But this mm. is, um, what was I going to say? Oh, forgot to mention, yes. we had brunch. What did we have for brunch? We had cheese toasty. It was well, well done. Thank you. So I currently don't have an oven so uh, or a working grill. So we did it all in a frying pan, Elvis style. Mm. And it was it was all right. There was lots of butter. I yes, could have so done better. Fun. I am usually a good cheese toasty maker. I think you're being quite hard on yourself. I, I have high standards. I, well, the thing is, is that I don't butter my toasty. I think that's a great <laughs> phrase. I don't butter my toasty. That doth not butter my toasty. <laughs> Um, <laughs> we've got it this is the new <laughs> reaction yeah um, but the uh, yeah no I, I don't I don't usually do that so this was a nice treat for me and you put spring onions in it yeah well that was requested requested was onions because yes. I was like I need a lot more direction than mm-hmm. than I like to think I do in terms of <laughs> <laughs> life in general it was a genuine like it was a curveball all round it was white bread which I don't have at home really it see was... I can't digest brown bread anymore really? my tummy doesn't like it it's too hard okay so anyway. well that, oh, that's what I mean it's just like it was white bread the small white bread then that was buttered on both sides mm-hmm. or was it buttered on just the one side uh, it was as buttered. many sides as I remembered yeah. to butter it was buttered full stop <laughs> then it was square cheese not just your cheddar I did cheese. consider did you know yeah okay didn't go for it I mean, it was like for ease, Leah Dama. For me, I was, I was just like, this is, this is pretty. This is a high standard toasty. Even though you feel like you have high standards and it wasn't good enough, I was, yeah, I was in I'm food heaven. Very pleased. And then we're also drinking. Well, Josh is now drinking English breakfast tea. Mm. Is our drink of choice. Mm. I'm having a green tea. I mean, I wish I could. It gives me headaches. Yeah, it's quite strong. Mm. It is. Mm. It is very overpowering. <laughs> let's move forward yes right question that I'd imagine anyone who's watching this who's found this um, video wants mm-hmm. to know is how do I get into the music industry <laughs> if I want to work in it what do I do so how did you start oh gosh wow um, so when I went to uni the first year that I was at uni um, I I wanted to be in a band and I, it was a terrible idea. Um, I was I was a guitarist in a band, and um, and I also had my own band. I was a singer songwriter. Oh right! Yeah, it was oh, horrible. I love it. It was like one day those demos will come out, and everyone will know. I mean, they are they are in a dark dark place. It was a uh, it was yeah. I don't want to delve too far into that one, but um, it was. So I wanted to be in a band and the one thing that I wanted to do was learn about the music industry so that I could essentially manage my own band. Really? Yeah, I didn't want to work with... I know. Do you have issues with control? Well... <laughs> That's a really... I gave that away. Heard someone describe themselves as wanting to not only be the artist but to manage themselves. Yeah. and I, Really interesting. Well, it was such a kind of... In a way, it was a bit of a naive thing to think because it was like, why give away 20% of what I what I'm doing oops sorry um it was twenty percent of what I'm doing and making when if I learn how to do it myself then I'll just I'll just go ahead. Um but then moving forward I found that I didn't like the self promotion side of it. Yeah, completely. I loved learning about the people and what they do and everything that goes into making a label or um, finding out what a publishing company is or um, knowing that you need a full team in place when it comes to being a successful artist. Yeah. And so um, so I just thought, okay, so how's, what's the easiest way out of this? Yeah. In a way that I'm struggling as an artist but I'm really enjoying the business side and that was clearly to just not do music do it for myself like just you know at home I have several instruments and pick them up and just write tunes just for me though yeah and um, um, and then go into working in the music industry 
And the one thing that I had um, was that I'd met this chap called Adam Tudhope um, when I was at uni, and he um, he manages Mumford and Sons and Laura Marling and Keen. Oh, and really interesting gang. Yeah, very interesting gang. And the thing was is that this was like a few years ago, so this was at a time where Mumford only had one album out, and they were coming out with a second album but nobody knew so that was uh, that was the big album right the first one the first album Sign No More was the one yeah. that made them like that was the Grammy Award winning yeah, 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 success yeah, yeah. and stuff and um, so I interned uh, everybody's for a little bit and then from there I then um, started um, working at a company called Lunatic which is a management company for um, all Australian well not all Australian but mostly Australian acts Gautier um, and then Temper Trap Oh, really? Yeah. Australian? And then churches. Sure. Which, yeah. Oh, this is really interesting. I'm learning so much. Well, so... I uh, assume everyone who's not American is English. <laughs> or Swedish. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's two options. Yeah, no one's or Scottish or Lord. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're either from New Zealand now or <laughs> everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the Lord's really interesting because I, I think she's possibly one of the only big New Zealand artists that I'm fully aware of. At the moment. Yeah, I feel like there's one more who's another woman. Hmm. No. Is Kimbra from New Zealand? I thought she was American. No, she's definitely... So she's... Hang on. Is she? Do you want to Do Google you know it? What? I, I don't want to because this will take too much time. But okay. I feel bad now because we've, yeah. said, we've said something. <laughs> I'll yeah. put in the thing, in the thing, on the video, or maybe inside a voice clip. Is Kimber American? Okay. Slash, you can Google it and just pause the video. And yeah, that's again. true. <laughs> <laughs> that's the one thing that I've learned with uh, with a lot of people. Do your own homework. Don't get asked to do it. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, I always see your tweets of like, hey, don't know what time Dodie's coming on tonight. You can Google it if yeah. you really want to know. <laughs> yeah, I yeah that was the most recent one. With um, the one thing is is that I I'm really really appreciative and um, love Dodie's audience. Um, but like, when they're amazing they are incredible there are times where there are people asking questions that I genuinely don't have the answer for so when it's things like what time are doors tonight um, yeah. I might not necessarily know at that point but it's written on a ticket or yeah. it's like it says on the ticket or that is what Google is there for yeah. if it's various questions like can I use can I pay by card or stuff like that for merchandise it's like yes you can but I have the answer for that and I need to give them that answer. Yeah. But yeah. Um, Completely. Sorry. Back to how I got to where I am. Um, so I, it was essentially, it was a lot of uh, a lot of interning, a lot of unpaid interning, which is a big In thing. London? In London, yes. Yeah, so I, I got the train from Surrey, all the way from Surrey to London, um, three times a week. And then I started at um, a label called Pias, doing A&R, scouting there. And then, uh, short the long story short, ended up at ministry and um, then, then managed Dodie. Because <laughs> the Dodie thing, from what I... So I've known Dodie for a very long time. She's yes. one of my very good friends. Mm-hmm. And um, I remember she reached a point, maybe when we were about 18, 19, mm-hmm. 20-ish. Yeah. I'm going to go around that, the, yeah. that massive three years span <laughs> where she started freaking out and was meeting with all these managers and she realised she couldn't do this on her own. Yes. We were all kind of thinking about management. Yeah. Um, and she had a couple of meetings with a couple of people. Yeah. Um, including like my agents who we now realise would have been totally not suited to her. Yeah. Yeah. And then you, well, one night out of the blue, she yeah. gets an email from you. Yes. And it's a real case of right place at right time. Because yeah. she was like, great, so let's set up a meeting. <laughs> and it just seemed to, from mm. what I can remember, just go from that. Mm. Well, I think this is the thing that I find so interesting about that story. Because I play it in my mind weekly, where I think about it. Where I watched her videos as a fan as just like somebody who well as so i i mean i love youtube full stop and i watched her videos as just somebody who was like genuinely into her music but not like fangirl it was like no. i like this but she has i think it was 250,000 subscribers yeah and i just thought which to me as somebody who just works in the music industry and not in youtube to me that was like that's big number yeah, well, and it, it is a big yeah, number. like yes, at the time exactly. as well, like yeah, and the growth. Yeah, absolutely. And the thing was is that I didn't um, 
I didn't know anything statistically about that sort of thing. In my head, if you have even 10,000 subscribers, you're managed in that. Because I applied it to how music works. If somebody on Facebook or on Twitter in the music industry, they are, they are managed or yeah. there is a team behind them or something. And if they're not, then they've just recently left their management or something like that. That's just at that time. That's how I applied what was happening in that. And then she did this Q&A video um, where one of the questions was, when's your single or EP coming out? Mm. And uh, she said, well, I don't have an agent or a manager, so I don't know the first thing about doing that. She also had no plans to release any music. No. She was like, oh, it'd be nice, but like, I'd like to do musical theatre. Like, I remember that being a big yeah. thing. Yeah. And I was like, you can't not release any music. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they think that's why... So I came at an angle where I was just very honest. And I just said... I, I don't know the world of YouTube in a business sense. I know how to do music. So mm. I will help you with that. And... Yeah, I remember. Yeah. You weren't her full manager. You were like no. her music manager. Yes, exactly. <gasps> yeah. And the reason being is because I think Troy Sivan has two managers. I think he's managed okay. by Creed Company for his music. Yeah. And then managed by somebody else for his YouTube. That's I, interesting. Which is... You know, interesting now because music is clearly his thing that he wants to excel at. Well, you can do so much more in music than I think you can in YouTube, and you can reach so many more people. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that's that's where the idea came from. Was that I thought there's. I mean, we were discussing this earlier on, but when we were, I was saying how like people that just start working in music really want to, um, they really want to grasp onto something and say that they can manage an artist without mm-hmm. really knowing the industry and um, one thing that I found at that point was I think I've got the right contacts in the right places to be able to start considering managing someone yeah. but I don't want it to be a scuzzy band from South East London yeah and, I and don't... you wouldn't have wanted it to be anyone too big either Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but like, yeah. You, yeah, you want to take on someone that's manageable, and I guess Dodie looked very manageable. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, it, she can do some shows, do yeah. some projects. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> nice. Like, she's never done any proper releases before. This is exciting because mm. she's built a platform where she's very successful, and it just needed direction um, musically. Yeah. And the thing was, is that you know, I said to her, "You've clearly got the YouTube bit." locked down so I'll just do the music side and then a few months went by and um, and then we agreed on doing the on managing her all round yeah which is funny because I was considering it asking her and then I thought I don't want to make that step because she's not released any music just yet she's been working on putting stuff out but she's going to conventions and she's doing all of these things and I want her to feel comfortable with me, full stop. Yeah. Because at that point, I put on these shows at the Serial Killer Cafe in Camden. Oh, was that you? That was me, yes. Oh, that's really yeah. cool. The Aula one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No way! Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I went, and then who else played? Did Declan um, McKenna play? No, 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 no. no. So okay. it was, oh, no, sorry, sorry. It's, it's, sorry, the Aula one was previous, but the ones that she headlined. You know the... Yeah, the ones yeah. she headlined. Yeah, yeah the ones where... Maisie Peters supported. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, which was oh. know, super lovely. And um, yeah, so. I really enjoyed those. They were great. Just so you know. <laughs> but that's what I mean, is that that was the whole difference from what my job usually is to then working with Dodie was that I wanted to have this sort of point of difference where it's like, this is a project that isn't quite just music, and I can't put her in the Camden Assembly and I can't put her in the social because it had to like I had to essentially just study everything about her audience and how she engages with them and how they like to respond to what she says and what's too much and what's not enough yeah I mean it's definitely coming from a person who is so open to her audience that you know where where's the boundary here yeah um and so at that point it was just what's the best place that she could play at? And I was looking at libraries, I was looking at bookshops. Interesting. Yeah, I was looking at places that just weren't, weren't venues. Was the first one you went with Bush Hall? 
Uh, yeah, that was the first. Um, yes, it was. Yeah, yeah, the Christmas one. Yeah, yeah, that was the first one, and it felt very. I love Bush Hall. Yeah, I think it's a great venue. It's a very quaint venue. Um, it's like an old that's ballroom, a, room, right? A, yeah, no, it is. Yeah, that's a correct way of thinking about it. It's quaint. Yeah. So um, when you say you're looking at libraries, I'm like, that makes total sense. Yeah, exactly. I mean, now Dodie is getting into a place where she's able to sell out. I mean, last night we went and saw a play. We saw it. Go, go. Was that sold out? That must have been sold oh, out. It sold out in here. Yeah, sold out very quickly. And then, was it 2016 where she was the second fastest artist to sell out other than Ed Sheeran? That was this year. That this was this year. year, yeah. So her tour, this U tour. Yeah. Um, it was, um, so CAA, the agency, the booking agency. That I'm not sure with. if I'm allowed to include that info. Am I? I That's fine. Right. I think okay. it's okay. No, no, no. It's okay. going fine. But yeah, so, um, so, I mean, because in Music Week, they have these. So Music Week is a magazine, which uh, is... Um, a subscription base that the only one can subscribe to but people in the music industry subscribe to it and it gives you all the information of what labels publishers or whatever are up to and nice. what, they, what, what they want to advertise is happening in their company um, and there's these charts and it's the kind of the ticketing charts and it's most searched artists in um, for C tickets and ticket web I believe and um, and, and high and fastest selling I believe and Dodi was one on most searched and two in the highest selling, and it was behind Ed Sheeran. That's uh, so amazing. I know, I know. I mean, who's Ed? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Sheeran never heard of him. Never heard of him. I was saying this the the other day. I was um I was talking about Jesse Ware's record. Oh yeah. And how... Be very careful. Whatever you mention about Jesse Ware, my housemate works on her. <laughs> oh gosh, no, no, no! I love the album. I think it's fantastic. Really? Do you, I haven't listened to it yet. Oh, I went goodness. to her signing with Lan. Yeah. And saw like the audience is so diverse. Yes. I wasn't expecting that at all. Anyway, oh no, sorry. no, 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 no! I mean, no, no. I mean, so um, talking about kind of um, big large people doing stuff, and um, <laughs> it was uh, I was saying how I really enjoyed Jesse Ware's record. That she like between the two albums that she's done, this one being her third album, Glass House, she um, went away, like got married, think had a baby, had a baby, and and then I said, um, you know what? I can't think of an example of somebody who's gone away, got married, had a baby, and then had an extremely hugely successful album. Twenty five, never heard of it. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's just like Adele, nah. uh, but. Um, yeah, working with Dodie was such a nice progression because it hasn't, it hasn't been too far out of our hands and certainly not my hands because I know where I would like for it to go and it is like being a manager is thinking about, you know, two, three years ahead yeah. and then constantly thinking about where you're six months, six months from now I have to put my brain in check, like six months from now we've got March. So it's like, right, so what's she doing in March? Where will she be? Yeah, where will she be? She What's she doing in April? When's the new music coming out? Yeah. If new music's coming out, if new music. <laughs> um, <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> maybe never. Maybe this is it. But then on top of that, like, potentially, I'd imagine more uh, books and then producing mm-hmm. videos. And then there's, like, yeah. so many things. She's a renaissance woman in that mm-hmm. sense. Yeah. I so mean, you must have to plan for all three of those things and make sure that it's not too much. Oh, absolutely. And also make sure that it balances really nicely and keeps the music, which mm-hmm. is ultimately the the focus, I guess, going. Yeah. I mean, so the thing is, is that Dodie describes herself as a musician, and that's what I take as the sort of goal, mm. is that everything else is definitely a part of it. And it's like... And the thing is, is that she... I mean, she tweeted last night about the balloon drop at yeah. Coco and said, like, during the last song, the balloons fell. It was really lovely. And it was said, really nice. Yeah, and she was like, if my career were to end, I'm happy that I did that balloon drop. And I was just a bit like, I mean, <laughs> I hope it's not all just down to a balloon <laughs> drop. But but I think it's that control thing, isn't it? She was like, I want to spend £350 on this yes. balloon hoisting drop yeah, thing. Yeah, exactly. And it's like that, like thing that you do purely for yourself yeah, that absolutely. isn't necessarily suggested to you. I don't know if it was. No, no, no. Gosh, no. I mean, so the thing was is that uh, how how that came about was because... I don't Exclusive. mind talking about I know, I don't mind. I know, yeah. And I don't mind talking about this, but um, 
So the Coco and venues and everybody charges for confetti clear up. Oh, See, so but not only do they not only do you have to pay for the confetti itself and the cannons for the rental of that, which is a large amount of money, yeah. you also have to pay on top of that the cleaning fee. Yeah. And you can't yourself go around with two giant brooms and clean up yourself. You have to pay the cleaners. Interesting. But balloons are not part of the clean up fee. Okay, yeah, what good. you missed on Glee, we just, everything died, and now it's alive. And um, we were having a really intense conversation about balloons. balloons, I'm not sure how much of that we'll have recorded, <laughs> but specifically about how to hoist balloons. Yeah, oh, and, the, and then it'll be how many. to get into the music industry, yeah. but this is how to hoist balloons. No, it's a very boring answer, it's essentially you just pay a guy that works at the venue to do it for you. Okay, well, I don't now know, I know. The, Yeah, exactly, I don't know the exact schematics, but I know that that's what I paid for. Well, yeah. Dodie really paid for, but nah, it's business. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yes. question. Yes. Do you have advice you'd give to people who want to get into the music industry yes. as not an artist, but as a person working in it? Absolutely. Um, I say this, I get that question asked a lot um, by, by fans at um, uh, shows and all sorts. Yeah. And the main thing that I would always say is is to just go out there and meet people. Yeah. Like yourself, you're, you know, chatting with all sorts of people randomly. Yeah, I'm a natural networker. Yeah. <laughs> and I just am drawn to talking to exactly. everyone. Exactly. And it then becomes a thing where people come to you and then they're just like, they're yeah. asking for your thoughts and they want your perspective on something. And so, and then the other, the answer to that question, how do I meet people, is that there are plenty of things, specifically for the music industry, there are network events. Gigs. Um, there are gigs. My which God, happen go to shows. All of the Lurk time. Look at the back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If you stand at the back and you see somebody on their phone looking down whilst the band is clearly playing and trying usually to. Usually white and male. Yeah. <laughs> they're like between the ages older. of 25 yeah. and 35. They are, I'd say, nine times out of ten in the music industry. And agree. if they're not, what are they paying their money for <laughs> yeah. to be in that venue? But yeah, so um, so it's always good to just open up that conversation, or even just emailing, um, emailing, whatever you want to get into. Because the thing is, I think a lot of people either want to get into management or into A and R. But there are so many different jobs within the music industry. Mm. You know, there's marketing, there's PR, there's radio plugging, there's TV plugging, there's, um, <laughs> there's now like places like Spotify and Apple are. The really exciting companies to work for because streaming is such a huge mm. behemoth within how people release stuff now. Um, you have to go to Spotify when you start to get on playlists so like there's New Music Friday and stuff like that, which for the music industry is so important. Yeah. Um, but for the general um, approach to kind of get your career on getting on its feet I suppose is by focusing a lot with that side of things moving forward giving away stuff for free is obviously a really nice touch but no one's particularly interested in that form I think, what do you mean anymore. by giving stuff away for free? I, I think like as in giving music away for free so if you put stuff up on SoundCloud and Bandcamp I don't think in yeah, terms yeah. of like building your career. It needs to be on Spotify. Yes. Because that's the streaming site or yeah. Apple Music. Yeah, absolutely. I think that, um, I mean, even Tidal. Even yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Tidal's still a player. It, it is. And it's also... A smaller it's the, player. Well, it's the better royalty rate for artists, actually. Mm. Um, but so, I think that um, starting out um, in the industry on the business side requires just meeting people, just doing your research, and yeah. also be genuine as well. Because if you say something that is uh, not uh, disingenuous, that's the yeah, word, yeah. Yeah. that is the word, um, then you'll get caught out and you'll just be known as that person. Like, you won't be known for, he's a lovely, he's a lovely person, but, and that's the thing you'll yeah. get, you'll get the but, and that's what you don't want. Yeah. And I feel like as well with the music industry, there's lots of pockets of different, you can find your people, it's quite mm. incestuous from what I've gathered, Absolutely. as an onlooker 
who yeah. knows one or two people like, I'm not even a person who would know anything no. but it seems like there's pockets and there's pockets of people who are like super cool like art studency and there's yes. pockets of people who are who are really just chilled out and just yeah. don't care and then really friendly like mm-hmm. chatty pockets of yeah, people yeah. and yeah. you and especially within labels and you yes. find your people you do you do everyone has their crew and everyone has their group that they want and it's just because it's like in everyday society it's like if you get on with this person and they you know they uh, your rapport is there simply because you like the same things whether it be bands or singer songwriters or even um for, you know grime artists or r&b or anything you like only that listen to vinyl. you only listen to vinyl yeah i work at this really cool east london indie label that no one's ever heard of apart from six people and we're the best label guys it's like three times smaller than young Turks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and all of our vinyl come in a cardboard cutting of uh, kellogg's <laughs> cereal box oh my god like that will probably be a label like yeah. oh, be somebody yeah. who has done something like that where it's like it's all exclusive but it just comes in cereal boxes that's just given me an idea um, <laughs> <laughs> although we've done it dodios was a thing was it do you not remember the cereal killer cafe we sold dodios were they just like cheerios <coughs> and wheatos no it was um lucky charms great choice golden nuggets and Lucky Charms, Golden Nuggets, and something else. And Fruity Loops, I think. Yeah. All in one. I still have the box. Just the box, not the contents. Oh, that's like a year old at least (laughs) now. I genuinely think Dodie still has her contents. I wouldn't be surprised. And it's like hermetically sealed. And I think if you open it up, it's still good because it's just full of... Yes, crap. Oh, yeah, exactly. All nonsense. So (laughs) you can probably eat it and just be like, that's actually... This is going to outlast people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> They'll bury it in like a time capsule and be like, Dodie, what are these? <laughs> so imagine that's the legacy of Dodie. Oh, don't. Dodie. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Going to ask you another question. Yeah. Our final question. <laughs> All about your job. Yeah. You have two of them. I do. How do you manage having two jobs? Because lots of people have their main job and like a side hustle. Yeah. Two side hustles or whatever. Yeah. Or like freelance work. Yeah. You literally have what should take up full time work. Yeah. For two projects. Mm-hmm. I think it's all about having good time management skills and knowing as and when is a good time to do certain things for one thing and certain things for the other thing. Both are very demanding and both are extremely uh, tasking because it's a lot of admin. Yeah. Um, and but it's also the thing that's the best thing about it and the reason why I'm able to do it is because it's both creative, and it's both based on. A judgment more than anything. Um, the thing that is obviously very difficult from an A and R perspective is finding act, yeah. um, knowing what people are talking about um, in within the industry when it comes to new artists. But the thing is, is that you have to be a real people person. You have to be able to talk. Like I said, with building your contacts, it's about reaching out to those people and being like, oh, so you know, who's this lawyer like yeah. representing, or who's this agent representing, and Oh, um, Universal Publishing have just signed this new writer. He's looking to work with brand new artists and he's currently working with Enter yeah. Singer. Oh, so you have to a. be aware of, I guess, producers, mm-hmm. writers, yeah. artists. You have to be aware of the full. Yeah. Lot. It's not just about grab someone and sign them. Exactly. I think it's, and it's also about seeing it as a viable option for the label because it's like if you work for a company like Ministry of Sound. Yes, there are artists on the roster like uh, London Grammar and uh, uh, Sigala and stuff. Interesting. Yeah, so those sorts of like, they're so different. Well, like Tom was, that was a, Tom would have been a possibility because he, yes, he's insane, right? absolutely, yes. And so it's like, uh, the, the idea that, um, the idea that ministry as a label now is just very diverse and beforehand it was known for just dance music. Mm-hmm. or electronic music and now we are branching out uh, we work with this artist called Louis Berry and uh, he's sort of rock and roll um, sort of rock and roll he is rock and roll and um, really interesting. yeah he I mean I like to describe him as and I probably am going to get no, no I won't get in trouble uh, I personally describe him as um, if balls <laughs> We'll find out if we can leave that in. <laughs> but no, that's great. Yeah, um, but um, so... Is he young? 
yeah. For some reason, I associate with rock and roll with like middle-aged people. Well, so the thing is, is that what was so interesting about Louis Berry as a proposition, I wasn't there when Ministry had signed him, but um, but it's because he had a great story and his writing is all about him and it comes from him as well. That's it doesn't true. work with other writers, whereas Jake Bug on his first record worked with other writers and so it was like that's it, really interesting you always think yeah. unless there's a real taboo with that in indie mm-hmm. music absolutely I mean that's where you want to be the Alex Turner of you do music. everybody wants to be the Alex Turner I want to be Alex Turner I think we all want to be Alex Turner I mean one day one day I'm so sorry for my boiler anyone who can hear that really nice noise um, but yeah so um going on so many tangents yeah. <laughs> but no no, no. so right. I, I bet the, the main thing is that it's just is that it's keeping in keeping in check with both sides and not just um leaving one by the wayside when when you break it down into Dodie's projects are videos music book those are the three main outlets and everything else that she ever wants to do that is something that comes from her and then it gets piled in and it gets put on in that in those sections. Yeah. So it's like, cool, so today we're talking about the book. So put that put that hat on. Right? Mm-hmm. Next email, the next email's about merchandise. So that's you know, that sort of incorporates the book but doesn't really incorporates mostly music. So yeah. there's that. But it also incorporates the videos. Videos, that's doji. So yeah. that's like if there's anything like a sponsor video or anything like that, or an ad that comes through. Obviously, you get given a lot of rubbish ones, as you know. <laughs> <laughs> I do know. Yeah. Um, whereas, it's and it's also about just maintaining that relationship with agencies as well, and yeah. sticking, staying on their good side because also they're trying to get you to advertise their product, but at the same time you're trying to get them to come back to you. Yeah. Completely. Yeah. And to trust you as a as a business yes, partner, I exactly. guess, in some ways. I mean, I'm I always get particularly annoyed when there are companies that are clearly giving it a go using influencers or um, or people from the internet, I guess is the better term yeah. for it. Creators. <laughs> Online creators. creators. Yeah. I've been doing this all day, haven't I? I've just been <laughs> saying bits and bobs of what sounds like We play like half a crossword game where <laughs> Josh will forget what something is and then be like that song, like the dog song. What's the dog song? Underdog by Banks, yes. That's the one. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. University begins with W. Warwick. Yeah, that's the name of somebody that I know. Um, <laughs> Sorry, continue. Yeah. No, no, no. Um, but um, I've lost my train of thought now. Um, <laughs> what are you talking about? I know, exactly. Um, the oh, I d- annoying people. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, when companies that are clearly trying to use um, creators or influencers... And um, they they come from a place where advertising was this, yeah. And they just want that, but you can't give them that yeah. because uh, because it's so you know so not in tune with that person's channel. Mm-hmm. Some people are great with kind of just doing it as a direct ad and being like, "Here we are." Like the way that like certain people, like Jack's Films, for instance, he does. Um, he does his uh, segment yesterday I asked you and then at the end of that whole piece of comedy it's then direct ad about whatever is that like the way Anna Arcana does her yes. like this is sponsored by da 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 yes, here's absolutely. my little plug here yeah. yeah I think that works really well for mm-hmm. some people but it can't work for everybody especially not regular similar content absolutely and that's why I think they see that and they go we just want that yeah. And then you tell them, but that's not how we do it. That's definitely not how she does it. Because if that's the case, you'll see a lot of the time when you watch the retention rate of a video, and it'll be like, yeah, like it starts at 100, then it'll probably go down to like 80% throughout or something. And then at the point where the whatever creative completes down, and yeah. it's now down to like 30%. Of yeah. people watching it because they don't want no one cares about the outro yeah exactly. no one cares no exactly and so trying to ingrain that into companies minds is <laughs> it's frustrating but I know where they're coming from and that's yeah. why going back to the whole like you can't be too rude to them they can't be too rude to you 
but you're both having this sort of passive aggressive email off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Literally my inbox. <laughs> There's so much like um I got an email from a company the other day saying, mm. hi, uh, we're looking for influencers to paint um, a sugar skull on their face to honor no. Halloween no, no. <laughs> um, with no payment. And I was like, I don't know where to begin. And no matter what I said, I'm going to sound like a cunt. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm like, I'm really sorry, but personally, I I won't take part in that because other people find that offensive. Yes. Like, lots of Mexicans express yeah. that that is offensive, especially yeah. in relation to Halloween, not Day mm-hmm. of the Dead Festival. Yeah. Um, and also I won't work for free, bye-bye. <laughs> yeah, I think that's where, like, I love the whole good exposure thing. <laughs> you would have thought it was dead now. Like, this is the yeah. thing. I'd say maybe, like, 15% of companies that get into my inbox know what they're talking about. Yeah, no, 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 I if think... If not that... 10%. Yeah, it's it's tough because you do have a lot of agencies or direct companies that have just, they absolutely understand who the client is, what their content is, and what the, um, this is coming from an agent's perspective, if they speak to me, they know what they're getting, yeah. the brand then has to be convinced at that point. I mean, so we're having it at the moment with um, a brand that shall not be named, that they require three approval stages for one small like by approval stages do you mean um go back uh redo go back redo or like no no no. i mean i mean i mean you send them a very they send them 30 seconds of essentially exactly what they've asked for the scripted thing that they've asked for and then you send it to the agency and then they came back saying it needs to be approved by three people and then they come back, to, and then they'll Gosh. come back to us yeah. and say, "Can you change these bits here?" But then if I go back to them and say, "No," and then you've got to go through three. You've got to go through people again. So it's like the process is that wasn't. But then they get really arsy if mm. you don't give them the goods. Yeah, so yeah, of course. If they're like, "This needs to be live now." And then you're like, but you gave me edits four days ago and you take three people to approve. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. It doesn't work like that, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah, I definitely think the influencers are held to ridiculous deadlines yeah. that will be realistic within a company mm-hmm. structure, but mm-hmm. aren't realistic when you're having to get things approved as an individual freelancer. Absolutely. Like, yeah. it just doesn't. I think that's where some brands and some companies don't understand is that it is you. Yeah. There may be um, I don't a get management. Yeah. No, exactly. But there may be a management who, um, nice, good to show that it's still DIY. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> I will sit here and relive our conversation maybe tomorrow. <laughs> Great. Um, but, like, yeah, like, some people may have a team behind them, but, like, that doesn't make it any easier. Yeah. If, like, if you take, for instance, someone uh, like Tom Scar, where he has a team yeah. that work with him, and so, um, so if there's a sponsored thing there... Like, how many people do you have to go through to then be like, okay, so the brand has asked for this. I mean, I don't know. I'm purely speculating because I've yeah. never asked him about it. But, like, going back and forth with the brand saying, cool, like, could you change this scene or something like that? Or, you know, I think that this script... Like, it all comes down to when they start with, like, a script or something like that. And if they don't approve the script, then they film it. Yeah. And then if they have something... If they have an issue with something that's been filmed... I think sometimes there's points where brands don't get it where you can't set this up exactly the same yeah. with the lighting exactly the same. It's not the like sound. you can go just do another version of it. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't work like that yeah. within the context of the other video. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah, you get asked really ridiculous stuff that just mm-hmm. shows that the the brand or the agency or whoever doesn't really understand YouTube or Instagram mm-hmm. or Twitch, let's say, or whatever yes. platform you're using. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's it. I think that, um, especially like something where I've had one person say, um, could we change the background? It's like, so you, you liked what she said. Yes, definitely liked what she said and how she said it. But could you change the background? It's like, so could you refilm? Can we get a refilming fee? Yeah, and it's just like, then you go back and you say, cool, well, it's now officially what you've asked for is now double because we have to go back and do it again. It's like, well, we don't have the budget for that. It's like, oh, we're not we're not refilming just yeah. because you didn't like a white background. It's so it's, weird. Yes, yeah, it's, it's very, very odd. 
but yeah, anyway. That was, that was a nice <laughs> bit of so Everyone has that. <laughs> um, what was I gonna, there was one other thing. What was I going to say? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? No? Is this okay? No. Awful. This, can we refilm it all again? <laughs> but no. um, <laughs> send me an email and I'll send it through three other people to approve. Yeah. Oh, good Lord. Oh, this was the other thing with the Tom Scavig. Yeah. Just like... You can't, we, I normally get reached out to it. It's like, we have to get it done by this date. Like, right by this date, mm-hmm. right from the beginning of the project, let's say. It's like, two weeks' time, it must be done. It's like, you can't do that, especially if you're a team, like someone yes. like Tom Scar, where you have to, yeah, and also getting things approved, getting mm-hmm. what you're going to say approved, getting even just the, the copy for your Instagram post yes. about it yes. approved. All of this stuff and re-edits and whatever, you're not a slave to them and mm-hmm. you can't get it done in two weeks. This yes. is this is just me venting now, but you can't you get can't. it done in two weeks. No. You've got to know who you're going to work with and get that approved with a brand like a month beforehand. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, so there's been occasions where I've talked with a brand and it's been, you know, it's not been the most... Um, <laughs> I was going to use the word delicious to describe it, <laughs> but it's not been the most exciting yeah. company, but, and it, and it might not necessarily be for Dodie, so I then suggest other people, yeah. like I've suggested yourself in the past, oh, and thank you. it's like, but then it's their job then to take what I say, yeah. and then go, yes or no, and I've had it from some people, they've been like, oh, amazing, could you reach out to yeah, them? Yeah, I get that. And I'm like, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Here's their email address. Do literally the same email, but start it with... I wouldn't even give them the email address unless it's hard to find. Yeah. I'd be like, you can literally go on their Twitter. Yeah, I know. It's, it is like... Just refer you to someone cool. Yeah, exactly. And somebody who it fits better with. Yeah, yeah, completely. Yeah, I think... I'm that... trying to get Lucy and Lydia to do more music things. Oh, okay. Because they don't have any music contacts, but they're just so... Yeah. If you've ever seen anything Lucy and Lydia have ever done, it's like pop, 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 pop. Wow. R&B I, pop. No, I genuinely haven't. That's so interesting. <sighs> really? Oh, my God. All they talk about is JoJo and wow. Little Mix and Chris Brown and all yes. of these people. And it is just constant uh, Azara Larson. Yeah. And yet they don't know anyone who can get them into the gigs. Right. And I'm just like... That's you mad. should have that because you just naturally go off on one whenever you're in yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, that's it. It's that, I mean, I've tried so many times just for my own personal game to get LucasAid Sport on board, but they. they... <laughs> you were LucasAid first. <laughs> LucasAid Sport Orange specific. <gasps> oh, the, the, the still one. Yeah. The I used to drink one. a lot of that. Yeah. I had a friend who was addicted to it. Maybe it's got MSG in it. I anyway. think it does. <laughs> Maybe that's why I am. Anything but... weirdly addictive that is just orange squash. Yeah. MSG. MSG. Have you tried their, their water? No, it sounds gross. Oh, yeah. It just tastes like butter. Uh, yeah. Is it like a rehydration sachet? Yeah, I, I don't... It's in gyms now. <laughs> it just tastes like it butter. Just, well, actually, funnily enough, <laughs> I thought this, and then Daniel J. Layton tweeted it, and I was like, I'm so happy someone else thinks this. You're, you're the, you are the second person to mention it to me. I think my boyfriend mentioned it as well. Really? What is the time? We've talked for way too long. Oh, sorry. No, it's so okay. Sorry. It's fine. How dare you communicate with me? <laughs> You've done one. I, yeah, I've done one with BJ. Yeah. I watched that one. Um, and it wasn't nearly as long as this. No, so he was, but he's always under like this ridiculous schedule. Yeah. I was saying as well, the other thing about speaking to people who are who are good at their job is that they are constantly getting texts and messages and calls and emails. Like, so you can't keep anyone for that long because there's going to be like, you've had how many, you've had one call and like, yeah. we'll go with 16 messages since you arrived at my house it an was, hour ago. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, but then it's stuff that I've said. I've said I wouldn't be here if, uh, firstly, I didn't care. And secondly, <laughs> um, if I didn't have the time. So, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, thank you so much for joining me. I, Appreciate I it. That. Thanks for sharing all of your your wisdom, yeah. and having a really long chat about balloons. <laughs> I really enjoyed that. How to get in the music industry. Right, so you need to get an Uber from <laughs> North West London. You need like 300 <laughs> yellow balloons. <laughs> yeah, this is yeah. was, this was very educational. Amazing. Um, Amazing. And I think, yeah, big things I've gathered is that internships are very important. They are. Unpaid and ones are people. a no-no. I, yeah. I dislike those, but they I are. I hate them, yeah. They're sadly part of some of it is part of it. Well, I mean, that's another conversation altogether. I'm not going to keep you. <laughs> yeah. No, but I totally agree. Internships yeah. is a whole other thing. I should get on someone who's like an internship person. Mm-hmm. Anyway, 
Thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. We also made a video on Josh's channel, which you can check out somewhere over here. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> uh, oh, this is, yeah, Josh yeah. making a video every day for October and then never again. Yeah. Every other day. Every other day. Vid <laughs> video in day every other October video. That does work <laughs> in some way. Their words. Yeah. But, um, yeah, if you want to go check that out, I'll link that somewhere around if it's even up. Oh yeah, it'll be up. This is going out on Saturday. Oh yeah, it, it's, it'll be up. I, it's, yeah, this is today. goes up today. Great, good. Brilliant. Well, go check that out. We're, we're proper cross-pollinating. Love it. Alright, thanks gang. Uh, speak to you soon. Bye. Bye. Ooh, I do look like I'm wearing a dressing gown.